The Blue Sky Bio Fully Guided Crystal Sinus Kit allows you to safely breach the sinus floor while keeping the sinus membrane intact. Always begin by measuring the preoperative height of bone. This example will show how to lift the membrane to place a 4.3 by 10 millimeter implant with only 6 millimeters of native bone to the sinus floor. The keyless design of these drills matches exactly to the Blue Sky Bio Fully Guided Surgical Kit. When using these sinus drills, choose the Blue Sky Bio Fully Guided Surgical Kit as your drill kit in the planning software. This will automatically set the guide tube in the correct position for both the fully guided kit and for the guided crestal sinus lift kit. The drills in this kit will not cut soft tissue and have built-in depth stops. The bone condensers also have depth stops allowing you to avoid placing direct pressure on the membrane throughout the procedure. This is the drill sequence when placing an implant with 6 millimeters of initial bone height. Always start with the 3.6 by 2.5 millimeter long starter drill. It should be noted that this is the only drill in the kit that is end cutting and is only intended for profiling the ridge and for creating an initial pilot hole. You should have at least 3 millimeters of initial vertical bone height when using this kit. Seat the surgical guide and start the osteotomy with the 2.5 millimeter long profile drill running at 800 to 1200 RPMs. Drill until the built-in stopper bottoms out completely on the guide. Continue to the next 3.6 millimeter wide by 3 millimeter long safe ended drill. It is recommended not to skip any drills in the sequence. As with all the drills in the kit, you should drill in a clockwise direction until the drill stop bottoms out on the surgical guide. Proceed to the 4 millimeter long drill and take it to full depth also. Once you get within one millimeter of the preoperative bone height measurement, it is recommended to begin checking for patency of the sinus floor with each drill prior to running it. For this example, we should begin checking for patency with the five millimeter long drill. Insert the five millimeter long drill through the guide as deep as possible without running it. If the drill bottoms out and there is still a one millimeter gap between the drill stop and the guide, then you know patency has not been achieved Begin running the drill until the stopper does bottom out. Repeat the process by inserting the 6mm drill to depth without running it. If there is still a gap between the drill stop and the guide, then drilling should proceed since the sinus floor is not yet patent. Now take the 7mm long drill to full depth without running it. Note that this time the drill stop seats completely. This confirms that the sinus floor is now patent without having to rely on tactile sensation alone. This method should greatly reduce the risk of a sinus membrane perforation since the depth control prevents any excessive pressure on the membrane. Now you can begin lifting the membrane. Since patency was achieved with the 6mm long drill, the corresponding 6mm long graft packer should be used to condense the graft. Remove the guide and begin placing graft material into the osteotomy with the graft carrier. Use a gentle wobbling motion to condense the graft until the depth stop on the condenser bottoms out on the crustal bone. Continue loading and condensing graft material into the osteotomy. After placing three to five loads of graft material, a periapical x-ray should be taken to evaluate how much lift has been achieved. There should be a well-contained dome of graft material visible above the sinus floor. Once the desired amount of lift has been achieved, you are now ready to finalize the osteotomy for the implant. Use the final drill for the implant you're placing. It is not necessary to drill to the full length of the implant. Rather, just drill one millimeter deeper than the depth where patency was achieved. With the membrane lifted, you can now place the implant. 